Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing today? I know it's awfully hot and sticky out there, but I'm very thankful that I'm in an area where I have a nice big thing of air conditioner, and I'm very grateful to the Lord just for everything that he's doing for both Ricky and I. I'm thankful for my salvation. I'm just thankful for all he's doing for both Ricky and I, and I can't say it enough. I'm very thankful especially that as as scripture states you know in, in what I read this morning that God hears our cries He's his ears are open to us and I love how he says that the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit I love that right now, and I love the fact that when we cry, he hears us and he delivers us. And I had a little bit of a question, but you know, I wanted to share with you. Yesterday, Ricky and I had a really awesome day. We had a really awesome time, and I wanted to kind of share that with you. Um, we're, the time we get to spend together, we, we try to make the most of it. And a lot of what we do is we like to go for drives. We just go for a ride, you know, throughout the area sometimes we'll stop somewhere like um one of our favorite places is a, a comic book store uh in the i want to say the willow grove area I could, I could have it wrong but it's a really cool comic book store called brave new worlds it's really cool and they've got some nice stuff uh they've got something there i'm interested in in, in the wonder woman realm i'm a big wonder woman fan and uh, I'm going to wait a couple of weeks until I get my Social Security to get it. But I, I'm really grateful for it, and, you know, just getting to spend that time. But we go for nice drives. And yesterday we decided uh, we were going to explore uh, certain areas of not just uh, Ben Salem, but uh, in Bristol. And we had a really nice drive. It was really cool. Uh, we found a park that we plan on going to to have ourselves a little picnic. They have grills there so we can take, you know, food and grill meat and stuff, which I'm really looking forward to. But most of all, uh, what I'm looking forward to is always getting to spend time with my husband. And as I said this morning, I'm just very glad that the Lord hears us when we cry out to him and he intervenes and intercedes for us. But I had a, another little thing for you. Uh, as you see, I, I posted something very interesting from today's daily devotions from Pastor Joe out of uh, 2 Timothy 4, verses, I believe, 6 and 7. It says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And there's something very special in this. As I shared not too long ago about how Paul is writing this to Timothy and he knows that he has a death sentence on him. Uh, Pastor Joe was describing it. He was in this particular prison and it was probably a pretty nasty prison. But the blessing that Paul saw in this was every guard that was chained to him for six hours, he got to share Christ with. So it's either uh, you get saved or... You just go nuts. <laughs> but this was also occurring right after uh, Nero had done something very despicable. There was a fire that took place in, in a section of Rome. Nero started it. Nero was the one that did it, but he decided to blame Christians. So that resulted in the worst persecution, probably one of the worst forms of persecution against Christians. And Nero was despicable. And in this, Paul is realizing that he's going. But he says to Timothy that, you know, I've fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. You know, he talks about in this, he knows that he's run the race. And he knows that he's finished well. And, and I want to ask a small yet vital question for all of you. When you're running this race for Christ, are you running it to win it? Are you running it with a purpose or a goal in mind, with a goal that God has given you? Are you allowing yourself to be distracted by either the things of the world 
or by chaotic, unbiblical thinking. And there's so much of it going on out there, and it just... It doesn't need to be from somebody like a Joel Osteen or a Bill Hybels to, to be a false doctrine. You know, I want to share something. And something that, uh, one of the things that I had to, you know, that I uncovered, that, that uh, God helped me in my healing process. Something that my father used against me. And it was, I believe, was the result of unbiblical thinking. He constantly always talked about how a teacher of his put on his report cards, finish his work started, needs improvement. And he always flung that in my face. Constantly did that. And I found it very, not un only unnerving, but I, I resisted against it because deep down I knew he was in the wrong. Not just simply he's in the wrong, but I knew he had no right to say this. But there was, you know, as a friend of mine in college, one of my professors said, with every theory, there's some element of truth with it. And the thing was, he was saying that uh, I wasn't finishing what he wanted me to start. I remember how my father tried at every opportunity to pull strings to coerce me into doing things that I knew not only did I not want to do, but I knew that weren't God's will for my life. I can name a few examples. One, he wanted me to go work at Pfizer where he was working. I put in the application and uh, I had the interview with the uh, head of personnel and I could already tell from her that I wasn't going to get it because of my father. My father, for as much as I know the man is saved and loves the Lord, he didn't have a very good reputation. And there's still things about that that I'm, I'm, I'm putting together, but I, I know that he didn't have a very good reputation because of the doctrinal thinking that he had and, and somewhat still has. Chaotic, unbiblical thinking. He had this legalistic belief that I needed to follow him every step that he wanted me to. That what, I, what he said went. And that regardless of whether or not he was right or wrong, which more often than not I hate to say that my father was wrong, it still went. Not only did I do that, and I didn't get it. And he was livid about that. He was very livid about that. And I didn't want to say it, but I had, but, but I had no choice but to tell him the flat, honest truth that I didn't get the job because of him. He couldn't take it. I, I think he still is in denial on that. Not only that, but he tried to coerce me into going into the military. I went to at least two that I can remember uh, recruitment centers, one for the Navy and actually one for the Army Reserves. The Army Reserves had me take some type of test. The Sergeant Major from there, and he was a nice guy. I wish I could remember the man's name, but I see his face. Uh, he took me for this testing placement, and you know what? Never heard from him again. I wonder why. There was something about that, and I believe it was the hand of God. And it was the hand of God that brought me to Philadelphia College of Bible, which is now Cairn University, where I was able to get the help that I needed. And there was something there that God used, that God put in my path to help me finish something that I started. I was blessed to graduate from there with two degrees. It's technically one, uh, a two and one degree, Bible with an emphasis in counseling. And I made sure to make a point to state whether it was on my graduation day or in my yearbook that in Christ, this was a, I finished the work I had started. But, you know, I'm still working on more. 
I'm still working on more. I'm still finishing work that God has started in me. It's something every day. And I firmly believe that Paul was speaking about this not just in 2 Timothy 4, verses 6 and 7, but I believe he was also speaking of this in 1 Corinthians 9, 24, which I'm going to read to you. He says, Know ye not that they which run a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. The writer of Hebrews says, Wherefore we also are compassed so about so great with a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. You see, we're not here to win it simply, but we need to run this race with patience. We need to endure it. We need to be willing to, to take a stand. There's a, also a passage in Philippians that speaks volumes on this as well, and I want to share it. He talks about also running a race. His Paul's desire was to know Christ more. And he says, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend for that which I which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Now, I've had a lot of people to take that particular passage out of context as a way of saying, uh, don't dwell on it, deny it, and, and, and forget about it when it comes to things in your life. No. God wants us to be able to to focus on it, to deal with what's happened in our lives so that we can move past it, move through it, and overcome it in Him. And that's what I believe He means in this. We're running a race. And sometimes in along the way when it comes to the race, we encounter obstacles. We have moments where we stumble and fall. We have moments where we're wounded. We have things that come up in our lives like some, something out of our past that's not our fault or something that was a past sin but it's been forgiven by Christ because we've confessed it, yet Satan wants to throw it in our face. And I believe that we're all running a race. We're running this race, but it's not simply to win it. It's running it to finish it and to win in him. It's not just running for the sake of winning, but running for the, for the sake of honoring Christ Jesus. This is something God's still showing me the true meaning of. It's something I ask myself on a daily basis as to whether or not I'm, really, I'm running in this race to finish it and win it. I think we need to run to finish and win, not just simply win. We're not here to grab some prize. We're here to run the race for Christ Jesus. Something I, I caught out of a couple of commentaries. I love I love using commentaries. It really helps my it helps in my study. The Asbury Bible Commentary commented on Hebrews 12 verse 1. It says the challenge is ours now to do as the faithful of previous times did. The point of this whole section has been to lift up the necessity of persevering in faith, especially when adversity comes. The promised reward is reserved for those who hold firm in faith through all of life's challenges. That's the crowns that we're going to receive in Christ when we get to heaven. Well, we're in this, it says, we are in the arena now, watching on all sides from above are those who met the challenge before us. Isn't that an awesome thing? We've got loved ones who've gone on before who knew Christ as Savior, and they're up in heaven watching, who've met the challenge, and they're watching us. And whatever encumbers us and holds us back for winning the reward Whatever sin weighs upon us and causes us to drag our feet, whatever slows our progress in following Christ, must be shaken off. The way to do that is claim God's word. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Also claiming what he promises in his word, that as far as the east is from the west, that's how far he's removed our sins from us. 
I'm going to read that verse because I have that verse here that I, I want to continue to share that I, I feel is, is very important that I believe is, is something powerful. He says, As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Psalm 103, verse 12. And remember too, people, that we can rest in the knowledge that despite the fact that we struggle with sin as Christians, that we're not perfect, far from it, we can rest in the knowledge that we are forgiven. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. That's something important, and it does say, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And that's also important. But bottom line, we need to rest in the knowledge and, and act on it that we are no longer condemned. Because we've accepted Christ as our Savior, we are forgiven. And we need to not let the weight of past sins that we have been forgiven over, that we have confessed and been forgiven over, weigh us down. He also says, it also goes on to say, and I, I want to make sure I read all of this. Like it or not, we're in a race for the ultimate prize, and the reward goes to the one who perseveres against fatigue, the elements, and hurdles placed in the way, and who carries the torch of faith to the finish line. That means we win when we finish. That's, what, that's how I see it. He also says in Bridgeway, in Bridgeway uh, Bible Commentary, the writer of this commentary states that Christianity is a life of effort. As runners in a race strain to the full to win the prize, so Christians should put all their effort into whatever they do. As athletes undergo strict training in their pursuit of victory, so Christians should deny themselves lawful pleasures and foods in order to be more useful for God. Now, I'm... I'm I'm wondering in that in that area because he's also talking about eating food that's been sacrificed to idols. But he says that Paul has purpose and effort in all that he does. He is like a runner who heads for the finishing line or a boxer who aims to land his punches. He spares no effort in his program of vigorous self-discipline to keep himself fit. He realizes that it is dangerously easy to warn and instruct others than fall short into sin himself and be disqualified. This is Paul speaking in this area. But bottom line, we are in a race we, and, and we need to put all our effort into what we do, whatever we do. We need to not let ourselves be distracted or put, you know, allow, allow past sins to hold us back from winning that reward. He also says in he, with, with, when it comes to Hebrews 12 verse 1, the same commentary says about the examples of true faith that the writer just gave it, it should encourage the Jewish Christians, it should encourage Christians everywhere, I believe, to face their difficulties with similar perseverance. They must remove the sin that hinders and strengthen themselves to withstand defeat. They will be encouraged to endure as they consider the sufferings that Jesus endured and the heavenly reward that he now enjoys. That's something that we can look forward to, isn't it? We need to run the way, race to finish it and win it, people. And I don't know if we're doing all of that. I think we need to keep our eyes totally focused on Christ. We're runners in this race, and we and part of it isn't just finishing as quick as possible, but it's having that endurance. You know, we're going to have obstacles in front of us. We're going to stumble and fall, and we're going to be wounded, as I said before. We're going to have moments in our walk with Christ where we either have someone that violates us someone that slanders us, someone that does something just horrific to us. And it could be a fellow, so-called fellow believer, or it could just be somebody out of the blue. But God does not want us to wallow in our sorrow. He wants us to face it, to deal with it, to focus on how to overcome it, and to go on. Now, nowhere in there does it say forget and deny what happened to you. Anybody who thinks that needs their head examined with a spoon, if you get my meaning. Dan Allender once described uh, this in The Wounded Heart, that Christian, 
How did he say this? Forgiveness based on forgetfulness is like the Christian version of a frontal lobotomy. And he goes on to say that denying your past is pretty much tantamount to denying God and what he can do for you. And I really encourage all of you, if you're in the midst of a race and maybe you've stumbled, you've veered off the beaten path, or something's happened, some something's happened that's caused you to stumble and fall and make you want to quit, come to God and ask for his help. Ask for him to help you give endurance to continue running the race. If maybe you've gone off because the path because of sin, confess that sin to him. Seek his forgiveness. He will give it to you and he will cleanse you. And he, as I said in, in, in the Bible, what it states, he'll, as far as the east is from the west, that's how far he puts our sins from us. He forgets them. He doesn't remember them. And I urge all of you who don't know Christ as your Savior, if you're bound by any type of sin and you think you're not, how do I put this, if you think you're unworthy to, to, to have Christ as your Savior that God won't take you, guess what? Ask Him to come in. He will, he will, he will save you. He will cleanse you from your sin. You can't do it on your own. But Christ died on the cross for you and he paid that price for you. Ask him to be your savior today. I'm going to post a link. I'm, I'm going to, keep, as I said, I'm going to keep posting it. And I'm inviting everyone to click on this link, read it, and make the decision today to come to know Christ as your savior. I'm also urging all those who are going through how do I describe this? Rough, rough, rough obstacles and rough moments in, in the race. To be willing to turn to Christ. Ask him to forgive you if you've done something stupid. He'll cleanse you and forgive you of your sin. But also, if it's, if it's something where it's something that was done to you that's not your fault something that you think God will hate you for, give it to him and, and, and know that he will not hate you. If you've been through any kind of violation or someone slandered you, you've been through something traumatic that you think God will understand, he will understand if you'll turn to him. I urge that today. I urge it. Please come to him today. And cast all your cares on him, because he truly does care about you. He cares for you. He really, really does. But most of all, learn to enjoy the journey. And take time to stop and smell the roses. He does want you to make sure that you're spiritually rested. And part of it is getting physical rest. I lift all of you up in the name of the Lord, and I urge all of you to just continue running the race. Finish and win. I have to get going. There's a lot to take care of today. Boy, this was a lot I was speaking about. <laughs> Sorry. But I wish you all a really wonderful day, a wonderful evening, and just run the race. Bye for now.